Hi there and welcome to this session. You know, in today's session, I want to talk to you about how you can align your finances with God's Word. And of course, why is it so important to do that? Okay, it's absolutely critically important that when we handle our money, we handle it um, according to God's Word. Um, so what do I really mean here when I'm talking about this sort of alignment? Well, simply what I'm saying is that when we handle our money, we want to do it according to God's Word. Okay, we want to do it God's way rather than doing it our own way or rather than doing it the world's way. You know, there's endless magazines and TV programs about how to handle money. You know, money magazines, there's endless TV shows these days on property investment, share investment, all these kind of things out there. But as a Christian, we want to make sure that we do it God's way. And there's a whole range of reasons why. Well, first, and, and the obvious one is that when you do it God's way, you're going to get a better outcome. Why? Because God knows best and God is going to give you a better outcome if you do it his way. That's the first thing. The second thing is it'll lead to God's protection because God's way, once again, is better than the world's way. If we handle our money according to the world's way, at some point it's likely to become problematic. So for example, one of my great concerns about the nation that I live in, Australia, is that it's massively indebted. It's the second most indebted households on earth. And I can see a day coming where many people are enslaved to their mortgage, which is something that Proverbs 22 verse 7 warns about. Proverbs 22 verse 7 says, the rich rules over the poor and the borrower becomes the slave of the lender. So my concern is that many people will um, ultimately become enslaved to their mortgage, okay, uh, as interest rates rise. So God's word doesn't say that debt's sinful or anything like that. It just warns us that it, you can become enslaved by it. So therefore, it's a wisdom issue as to how much debt we take on and, and making sure that we're really careful with what God has given us. You know, we want to be good stewards of it. So that's the second reason. We want to protect our finances. And so the way we do that, once again, is aligning our finances with God's word. And the next thing is, so of course, some, some fantastic spiritual principles that we find in Scripture that will really benefit you if you align your finances with God's Word. So one of the obvious ones is sowing and reaping, you know, the agricultural concept. And that is the idea that when you sow in something, you know, you spread the seed um, and you could be sowing all sorts of things. You could be sowing generosity. You know, you could be sowing love through, you know, you know, loving relationships. There's all sorts of things, you know, that you can sow. And then the consequence of that is you reap. So, so and the Bible talks very clearly, someone who sows generously will reap generously. Okay, so when you do things God's way, it works. Now, that's the opposite to the world because the world says withhold. It doesn't say to give generously at all. Okay, yes, there are people out there promoting philanthropy and things like that. But ultimately, the, the message is about you getting. If you listen to you know any TV program, it's all about you. All ad adver advertising is generated about what you're going to get out of it. Okay, Very different to God's kingdom, which is about giving and building up God's kingdom and doing things for others rather than for oneself. Okay, So this whole idea of sowing, though, if you sow generosity, You'll reap generosity, you know, God will look after you and he'll take care of you and he'll bless you and so forth when we do things the right way. But of course, it has to come from the right heart. It's not about you getting stuff. As I say, that's the world's way. It's about what you can do for God's kingdom and what you can do for others. OK, that's the sowing concept. Um, of course, as I, I already mentioned, the biblical issue around debt. You know, if you enslave yourself to debt, you'll run yourself uh, into all sorts of uh, problems and you know stress, marital pressure, all those kind of things that come from having too much debt. So that's a real warning message there uh, and something, as I say, we can avoid by aligning ourselves with God's Word. And then of course there's identity. Something I love talking about is making sure that you're not getting your identity through the world and through what their world has to offer. What you have to remember is that you are a precious child of God. That's what the, the Bible tells us, that if you are a Christian, then you are a precious child of God. And that's where your, you know, your worth comes from, the fact that you are loved by God. He has a great plan for you uh, and that he sees enormous value in you, irrespective of what job you do, irrespective of how much money you have. Okay, so very, very important uh, to, to realise that. But then the question, of course, is, well, okay, there's some of the principles about why we should do it. Well, how do you do it? Okay, so the, the, the how side of it is simple. I start to believe uh, in applying the, one of the great biblical principles of repentance. Okay, now repentance is a, from a Greek word called metanoi, which means to turn around and go the other way. Okay, so 
when we make mistakes with our money, as we inevitably do with finances, we want to turn around, we want to stop and go the other way and realign our finances, as I say with God's word, you know, is do it his way rather than the world's way. So that's the, the big thing. We want to repent, turn around and go the other way. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing I want to encourage you to do is to learn what God's word says about money. Now, there are more than 2,350 verses on money, wealth and possessions. This is a massive area for us to learn about. Um, in fact, you know, with a bit of self-promotion, we've got a great book on our website uh, called um, you know, The Simple Steps to Financial Freedom. So that's something you can, you can buy online. There's also tons of our e-books on our website, which you can use and download. Okay, And they're all designed to give you biblical knowledge, biblical wisdom on how you can steward your finances. Okay, So that's the thing, that you've got to know what the Bible says. You know, sadly, we're living in the days where uh, Christians, sadly, are becoming increasingly biblically illiterate, despite the fact uh, that we've got more books, more resources, more iPads, more of everything that can actually teach you God's Word. Okay, so please so soak yourself in God's Word and learn what it says about money. The third thing, and once again, a bit of a personal favourite of mine, the need to know God personally. Okay, so the remarkable thing about the Christian faith is that you can have a personal relationship with the creator of the universe. I mean, that is an amazing thing to think about, that you can have a personal relationship with your creator. And it's not just this God, because a lot of people treat God as he's kind of this faraway figure that he's a little bit disinterested in, in the world and so forth. But our God is a loving God that wants to know you deeply. He knows you deeply, but he wants you to know him deeply so that you can have that personal relationship with him, that you can talk with him and that you can hear from him. And this is the key thing. By having a personal relationship with God, you're allowing him to guide you with your finances. You know, the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit, which is a person who um, you know, was sent to guide us and so forth. And with, with, when it comes to your money, you want to have the guidance of the Holy Spirit, okay? Um, especially because that'll help you to make wise decisions, you know, not to take on too much debt. You know, if you really allow the Holy Spirit to guide you through that personal relationship with God, then that will help you make much wiser financial decisions. Not, it's not perfect. We're human. We're, we're imperfect. God's perfect, but we're imperfect. So we'll, we'll still make mistakes. So don't beat yourself up. But it's more just this idea that we need God's guidance with our finances. And then the last one is to pray to God for wisdom. To align our finances with God, we need to pray to God and ask for wisdom. So in the book of James, it says, it talks about how do you get wisdom? Well, it's very easy to get wisdom ask God. Of course, there's lots of other ways. You can talk to wise people, people who've walked the path that you're walking, so they can actually share with you what their experiences were and so forth. But the key issue here is you want the wisdom of heaven. Okay, And so the way you're going to get the wisdom of heaven is you're going to have to pray for it. So in fact, why don't I pray for you now? So Heavenly Father, for all those watching, I really pray that you'll bless them with the wisdom that they need to steward what you've put into their hands well. Lord, I want everyone that calls Jesus their Lord to really steward their resources effectively for your kingdom, Lord, so that they will personally have financial health in their own life, but more importantly, Lord, that they can then fund and advance your kingdom, Lord, that they can sow into things that have eternal value, that they can help people in need. And we ask this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Anyway, I hope this episode's really blessed you.